Right, attempt number two. <laughs> um, I forgot exactly what I was talking about. I think I was going through just generally what you do. So yeah, um, you end up in the courtyard where Olive looks out and the two spites, they look out to the lighthouse, they realise that's the goal, where you need to go. And there's some other pickups and stuff. The go around the thing. It's quite fun to go around and collect the things. Um, and here, here's a little puzzle, a mini puzzle. So you see a key here. You know there's a gate here to get through. But, you know, you've got no way of getting through. Um, so what you need to do is, if the water could, now, Walter can go across surfaces of water, that's like his little superpower. Um, so he can go through, um, but then he can't go through the fences, um, because that's uh, blocked off. So you need to switch to Bernard to then set fire to this crate here, which sets fire to all the planks and the fences. Uh, so then Walter could go around and grab the key and he brings it back here and unlocks the gate So then they could all continue through Throughout most of this level there isn't really any direct threat to Olive. It's more just she's sort of tagging along um, It's mainly about uh, Bernard and Walter's just sort of guiding them through throughout this stage if we continue to make more of the game there might be more direct threats to Olive in a similar sort of way, like how Ico works, where you've got the girl that you're sort of protecting. It's a similar sort of thing, really. Um, oh, move. Shit, right. Um, so yeah, this is the main sort of courtyard. So Walter could go underneath, collect the things here. Um, Bernard can go up here. Uh, on this balcony and he could burn across this clothesline which is cool and he could grab this and the key here so Bernard uh, can unlock the next section so it's just a little pretty area um, here's another little area so Walter could go through and collect uh, this it's like a fit like image piece so there's a few of these like major collectibles throughout the level as well um, Bernard could do the burn up a fire rope again to get up here and get another one. So you get introduced to... Yeah, as a random side note, um, the, when we did the light and build on this thing, we did it on production, and we basically used half the computers in the uh, game dev studio at uni <laughs> to. We basically just logged onto all the computers and then used it as like a massive render farm to actually get it done, and that's still taken a couple of hours just because of a lot of um, there's a lot of houses and trees and the, um, stuff like that taking fucking ages. Uh, so, God knows how a lighting build is going to look when I try to do it on my home computer and my laptop. I might have to sort of set up a vendor farm with the two of those and see how that works. But going by how shitty my internet connection is right now, I have no idea how that would work. So, yeah. Anyway, that's, that's something to probably think about later. But, um, yeah. So, there's this other section here. So... Um, Bernard can burn up this rope here to get to the top and Walter can actually use this pipe to get to the top you know Mario style um, up this balcony up here because you see there's two things to go on there's a bunch of crates which need burning because uh, Walter can't squeeze through um, so you need to burn through these crates and then Walter needs to go down the pipe um, and then he can then 
make this thing spin to uh, put this drawbridge down. Um, I've just got some other things that I want to talk about after as well. Um, yeah, and then there's this area which is just a bunch of collectibles, so it's not really puzzle intensive. And then there's this, which is more of a just um, uh, a cinematic area where you get to um, sort of enjoy the view of walking up to the lighthouse, really. Um, I implemented this uh, system that I found on a tutorial before, which is like a spline camera. Um, so if I take it into. Yeah, right. right, so you've got your. Um, I can't remember if I found the tutorial too, but if you have a spline camera, it should be like one of the first things that pop up. Um, but yeah, basically, you've got this what, uh, track which the camera actually goes along, and then there's the track which it, the camera sort of focuses on, roughly. So the camera will follow this, so when it's at this point, it will roughly look at this point, like the corresponding point on this line here. Um, so I use this to sort of create a nice smooth camera track going across this sort of land bridge um, and I control the exact direction of the camera which is quite nice for getting this really good cinematic shot and it comes here and sort of swivels around um, so you could see this sort of area before going up to this last sort of puzzle here um, yeah, the problem is there's like these bunch of plants going along, like a spline plant going along the lighthouse, but um, it's not obvious most of the time. Sometimes it doesn't actually work. Um, so that's when it comes to the gameplay sort of fixes I need to do. That was mainly this was the sort of main one because you can't complete the game unless you do this. Uh, there's also an issue with the pipe over there where the water guy goes through not exactly working um, but yeah um, this is that, we light the lighthouse and I'm pretty sure there was a gate there before Oh no, it's here. Okay, yeah. Yeah, you need to light the lighthouse to open the gate. Um, and once you do that, you're able to come down here. Come down here, come down here, come down here. And you get to the port. You've got like a little boat. Oh, it's got the sprites on it. Um, yeah, so the... Uh, the sprites themselves have like a sort of spiritual connection to the town. So they're quite important. So when they turn up, she knows what they are. Um, so that's quite important. So, like, you can tell it's like um, the fire and water sprites. They've sort of worked into the culture of the town and all that kind of thing. It makes it a bit more interesting. As you can see on the lighthouse, there's like all this insignia and stuff. The fire and the water. So it's all, it's all like tied together. Um, so yeah, that's the overview, and then when you get to the port, you would probably move on to the next level. Uh, but in our game, it just finishes on like a little sort of looping cutscene of just her on the boat, and then it rolls, rolls the credits. Um, just because we didn't have time to make the whole game when we first did it. Uh, I just decided to make a really pretty level instead. <laughs> um, yeah, that's it. Uh, and... Now I guess I'm going to fix the thing up. Um, some other sort of things though. Um, I've been thinking about it a lot recently. If I were to go back and, or if you all were to go back and change it, there's a few things that probably would design a little bit differently if I had a bit more of a game designer head on when, when I did this. Because um, I was mostly responsible for the sort of engine stuff. But because we were sort of pressured to make a move on uh, and we needed to make it artistic to actually get a grade because it was a game art course so they mark it on being arty but we were like, we want to make a game um, it was hard because we were sort of tied between two different things and we had to make them both work for it to be successful in our eyes um, 
so it ended up a bit more arty than designy, naturally. Um, but there are certain design decisions which I think if we had more time or if we were able to rework this completely, um, apart from releasing the free version of this, which I'm going to do anyway because it'd be nice to just get it out there, um, if we were going to rework it, I would say a bit more focus on what is actually, you know, make the world make a bit more sense. So, I think the issue we had with some of the puzzles is that we had to, from a game design perspective, they don't really make too much sense because we had to explain a lot of how they work. Um, some people figured it out naturally. The kids actually figured it out much more than the adults. They just went with it and played it, and we were like, what? Uh, which is quite surprising. Um, yeah, the kids actually enjoyed it quite a lot, which is good. Um, but, um, yeah, stuff like... Okay, so water could squeeze underneath the door of the um, living room in the house, but he can't get through in between the crates here to get through the pipe. You need Bernard to come up and burn it. And also, why doesn't Bernard burn the floors and um, like the panels and everything else in the town? So I think... Maybe what we'd probably do is if we were to redesign this is more carefully redesign the town and make it feel like the people in the town have built their town to consider the fact that these sprites might be roaming about, like, you know, being bastards. Um, or not. <laughs> um, so it's just little things like, you know, if, you, if you're able to burn these things, like it's having a distinction between the textures and all that kind of stuff, like the art direction needs to be a lot more solid uh, as well um, but maybe there needs to make more use of like other kinds of materials like metals and stone and stuff like that and mud, like mud walls and all that kind of stuff just to um, make it tie together a bit more so that would definitely be something that if we were to redo this we'll probably um, um, revamp that but as a first sort of iteration uh, I mean a first big project like this we, we did alright I think um, but I think in its current format if we were to release this as a full game this level in itself I feel we'll have a lot of issues with it just not making sense um, um, there's, cer there's certain like art direction things that I like to carry across um, but maybe it's more if this game is more hardcore designed first before sort of pushed along to do the art side of things um, then I think we'd be a lot more better off so you know the, the levels would be fully blocked out rather than having um, you know half the level blocked out and then we had to do a bit of art stuff um, just because uh, we're sort of under pressure because uh, we needed to get out to a certain stage by a certain point. Um, yeah, there's loads of things that we change ideally, but mainly it's just like a bit more focus on making sure that the gameplay prototypes and uh, all of that is completely solid, and then thinking about art direction and how the game design, game design decisions affect the art direction and what things need to be taken into consideration a bit more. Because Bernard if he's made out of fire, should technically be able to set fire to everything, um, unless mainly he just singes certain things, um, or like, I know fire's a bit of a weird one, you have to keep like his abilities in check somehow, um, I think the thing that Amber said that might sort of explain his sort of powers, I guess, was, um, uh, oh, he chooses not to burn everything else down. Um, but that goes against the player intention as well, because there might be some players that just like, why can't I burn this fucking platform down? Why is it not working? You might say, oh, it's wet or whatever, but no, he should be able to, like, he's a being made of fire, like, and if the player wants to burn something down, they should be allowed to, within reason. Um, so I think that that's more of a, a, like, a game design thing, which might need to be sort of corrected. I've got some ideas for how if we were to redo this concept how we'd do it a little bit differently and evolve Olive a bit more um, but I'll probably go more into detail that in like another video or um, 
something like that, I might edit together the proper video with like all the guidance sprites analysis and all that sort of stuff. Uh, okay. <laughs> Apparently it's going slow. Right, um... Is anyone on? I don't think so, I've just been talking to myself. Um, but it doesn't matter because I'll re edit these videos and uh, well, these live stream videos and put them out as a proper video anyway so people could get, check through the analysis and stuff. Um, anyway, I'm going to actually fix some things because I've just been talking. Um, right. Now, first of all, I believe it come up with a fuckload of errors. Um, I don't remember it taking this long to load up the sequence. Oh, something just occurred to me as well. This was made in an engine version so old now we were still using Matinee. So... Oh, I might be able to redo some of the Matinee cutscenes in Sequencer. Um, that'd be nice, port them over and then I can make some changes because there's certain things which uh, I think need to be a bit more fluid. Oh, the characters don't even spawn. And I'm in a grey zone. Okay. So that's fun. What's going on? <laughs> oh, this is great. Um, yeah, so here's our game, everybody. Um, <laughs> that's promising. The player controller is not a valid local player, so it can't focus the widget. Starting to think if this doesn't work, like if nothing just works at all, considering I've migrated the project, I might just well not just migrate the project but just in general. Um I might just release the version that I already have um on my PC, just the packaged game. Um it, it works, there's issues with it, but I guess it'd be interesting just to see what those issues were in a way. I don't know. Um, I'm really confused. Uh, but. Okay, so this is Olive's actual blueprint. What's the error it's given me? Because that's now I'm trying to read Get Porn. I can't get the porn? So is it no Is the player controller not actually controlling a pawn then? Cheap. Oh shit, I don't think that won't work. Oh, yeah, it will. Yeah, it will. Yeah, it will. So this node's quite useful because it just checks if the node is actually, like, not equal to 
well, like the, the variable is not equal to anything. If it's not, then it doesn't actually run and doesn't get the error. It's a bit hacky, and I probably use it a bit too often, but it it works for most things. <laughs> Yeah, move on. Why does it take so long now? It used to be instant. I'm pretty sure it's not a frame rate thing. occurred to me I haven't got um, context dependent UI so currently it's giving me the controls for the what the fuck did I just fall through the map what the fuck where am I where the fuck am I Falling through the map. Shit. Um, that's probably when my player starts. It's not working right. Oh my god. There we go. Oh, fucking hell. Gee, that's what I wanted. That was it. I couldn't find a good place for me. I've got a custom player start that spawns them both at roughly the same location, like the fire and water guy. doesn't like that. Have I actually enabled... I keep picking the boot. The boot's the worst object. What to pick. Um, oh. That might be it. So I need to like manually set... I don't know why I did it like this. Um, Yeah, it was about two years ago. I've learned a lot about where scripts and stuff like that, like in Blueprint, should go now. Um, still not amazing. I could learn more, but yeah, looking back on how I've done some of the things in this project and how I've organised my code, it's just so fucking messy. Um, Oh my god, they're in the air. Well, that's something. Yay! Right. Here we are. And we're running at... Under 10 frames a second. So I think one of the first things I'm going to do probably is disable the depth of field. 
Um, I mean, it's nice when it's on the Alienwares and stuff, but I think maybe I could add in a switch that makes it platform dependent, so if we're going for high end, or I could have a graphics option for it, that'd be quite nice. Um, because I think that might contribute quite a bit. Oh, I can't even move now. Um, oh, there you go. So, R to switch, and there's a little marker that indicates the switch, but it's... It was intended as a placeholder, but we didn't have time to change it. You know, as usual, is the story of game dev. Um, you can see they got the little trails, so he's got like a little. He dampens the floor. It dries. Um, though, he's supposed to burn the floor, but he's not really doing much of a job. Not as so much as he used to. Um, yeah, and the camera, you can tell, is a little bit funny in the Switch. I need something to make the camera a bit smoother. Yeah, it's just a bit, it's... Like, in between, we do the switch, it's picking up another room, another angle, or something like that, and you're getting this weird, like, freeze in between. It should be... it should be smooth. I think that's the problem with it. We need, like, a sort of... if they're close enough within each other, we need, like, to smooth between them. Um, you know, just to sort of blend. Uh, I think that'll work a bit better, just because this... this snap... I mean, it's trying to... But then it goes to something else in between. So I need to look into that. Um, I'm going to add some notes. Um. Yeah, so I think this, rather than actually getting on to optimization stuff straight away, I might be more just taking a look at the project and sort of recording what I need to do. Because I don't want to jump in at the deep end and then realise that I might need to change something else first. Um, reason was to transition. Um, and I guess lost. It's more stuck cameras. Uh, camera stuck at certain uh, locations. <clears throat> yeah, it's I'm finding it quite hard to draw the line. Because the more I look at this, the more I think, mm, that, could, that could be fixed, and mm, that could be fixed. I don't know where to draw the line um, in terms of how much do I fix before releasing this version, or... Because a lot of this stuff is like fundamental things which I would change um, about the gameplay, art direction, stuff like that. It's almost like redoing the game to, to an aspect. Um, that might be something to do later on, but I need to talk to Amber and um, Hazrat more about that kind of side of things to see how much they would want to, um, and even if, I'm not even sure if I completely want to yet, um, but yeah, I don't know, because a lot of these issues it's just like, is there much point in redoing them at this stage? Like the secondary stuff mainly a lot of this is just like is there much point or is that something that if you were to redo this project that you're probably like with the redesigned gameplay and stuff like that that you would then redo after and stuff to take note of if the, that makes sense um i'm unsure um It's the optimization I think for this is the main thing. Just fixing up stuff and then optimizing, make sure it can run and get a stable frame rate. I think maybe 
I should cut it off. Maybe fix up that graphical issue. Yeah, like overhauling the UI is that something which is worth doing as nice as it would be as well as not second guessing myself a bit too much um, yeah I'm not sure if there's much point the logo I might just replace because the logo looks a bit shit um, uh, oh god, no. Bear with, right. Um, And yeah, fixing the gameplay stuck issues, I think that's important, because otherwise, even if I release this demo as a free little demo just for people to play, and they get stuck about it, then it's just going to be infuriating and there'll be no fucking point. Um, hmm. How do we do? This is where I'm probably going to ping stuff over to Amber and see what she thinks. Unless she's already watching. I don't know. I've got the link to this. It's down here, isn't it? Right, so fix shiny water, that's relatively straightforward. I could just like tick fully rough on his material. Uh, maybe I should delete the nodes that aren't needed. Um, yeah, see, there's a bunch of other things I wanted to do here as well. Uh, copyright claim. This is supposedly copyright free music. I don't understand. Um, yeah, improved sky, improved trails, uh, refined texturing. That that's like refining the texturing and add, making sure everything has normal maps and all that kind of stuff. It's nice, but at this stage, if we're just tidying it up a little bit just to release this vertical slice, is it worth it? If we think we could do a lot more with the game. Um, there's a growing part of me which thinks it'd be a cool idea to redo this project if um, but I think that would require a little bit I would want to work on some smaller stuff beforehand because I feel like this project could just sort of uh, spiral out of control a little bit the scope of it might go a bit out of hand, which is something I want to avoid, um, considering our last big project um, that we did, the same sort of thing happened. Um, uh, yeah. Better more fluid animations for characters. I mean, that's nice, but I'm not sure. Improved pickup effects. Yeah, but are they needed? Improve environmental effects. I feel like that should be only for optimization, if anything. Um, hmm. 
See, I had some ideas for this, which might make Olive feel a bit more um, instrumental to the gameplay. Where maybe the fire and water characters can sort of like perch up on her shoulders or something like pallets or whatever and then she's you give her the movement so they've got limited movement at certain points um, which might or may be one of the spikes at certain locations of the game you don't have access to um, so the puzzles will actually naturally change up a little bit it makes it could add for some interesting gameplay loops and all that kind of stuff um, could make things a bit more fun um, I think that might be a better way of how the game design could work better and flow better and make sense of everything else uh, um, yeah, fix the okay I'm going to do optimization because that's what I came to sort of learn a bit more and I think if we cut it off at, I'm going to do the logo, oh hang on, cut it off there I think, if Amber joins though I'm interested to see what her opinion would be, um, bear with me a sec, I will just check to make sure she's if she's about I think I dropped for a second uh, apologies uh, is this stream yeah all right um, you know what I'm just gonna ping this to this as well uh, Fucking hell, hang on. Um I just have a section for these uh, newer slash um, what's it called? I guess complete ideas. Just so I got those down as well, just in case that's something I want to go for. Um, it's also what I like about making perhaps Olive a bit more central is you could add more typical sort of. Uh, generic platformer elements to it rather than just be solely focused on what the other two characters are doing so it'd be a bit more like um, like a buddy platformer like similar what Banjo Kazooie or um, uh, I guess like Ukulele or uh, Ratchet and Clank those kind of games um, uh, 
yeah, might like it, it shift the gameplay over, and I think in a weird way it might actually make it a bit more interesting because you could strip away these powers and all that at different points and yeah it's more like Olive utilising um, Bernard of Alta uh, more as tools but they do have their own independence as well during certain points um, yeah I'm gonna write stuff out So this is more for like if it was more of a full game idea. Oh, yes, this live stream is sort of taking a bit of a detour around doing the optimization stuff, but I'd rather get this down. Um, because at least when I'm. It allows me to sort of decide how much work I should actually put into it now. So this is fun. <laughs> uh, is this still good? Yeah. Yeah. Also, I guess is the thing with the current art direction of Olive is that because of her size um, and how big her head is and all that kind of stuff, um, she might not be able to. If she had her own freedom of movement, she'd probably be a little bit restricted in how she's able to move. Um, but the point is, is, she is supposed to be a very, very young girl, um, so she's not exactly that independent um but i don't know i mean 
as a way to improve the gameplay, I think some of this stuff might make more sense. Because it just makes it a bit more dynamic. I guess that's the word to use. Um, why are you doing that? I'm sitting over here. That makes no sense. Why are you doing that? Okay, so let me go back to the Trello. I'm not sure if my Trello is actually logged in. This is different. Can't remember this cage existing. Boards and and and. Is this it? It's this. The trello that we used before. I think um, I might start a new Trello, might make more sense. A new board, I mean. How was that? I don't think I'm gonna have this stream on for much longer though, I might just do it until 5 o'clock UK time. Um, just because I need some food and uh, I need to get some other stuff done as well. Um, you might as well just do this. What's that background? Go for orange. Wait, is that orange or green? Oh, no, that's orange. That one's green. Um, see, colorblind. Uh, oh, I know. Mm, I'll go for that. Right.
I think, um, so I'd have a to-do, then I've got a, uh, do-in, and a completed. Um, so, the to-do are going to be here, completed here, and then do-in here. So, in to-do, I am going to have, uh, fix up any, uh, blueprint issues. Now, I don't know how long this would take because I've just migrated it to 419 and it seems to be quite a few errors. Um, most of it is where it can't get certain information so I'm probably just going to have to chuck a load of um, <laughs> is valid nodes everywhere and just see if that miraculously fixes everything. Uh, if not then I'll put in some more effort into actually figuring out what the problem is. Uh, just for now, just to get it sort of working, I think that's the sort of priority. I'm going to treat this, I'm not going to try and get too wrapped up in certain things if I don't have to. I just want to get it to a point where it's working. Um, and then if I need to go and clean up the code or whatever after, great, I could do that. Um, what was the other thing? Maybe I should just. Just put that right. Um, so uh, optimize So I need to run the GPU profile and all that kind of stuff to figure out what's exactly slowing it down at certain stages of the game. I have a feeling it might be lighting. That's probably because lighting isn't built. When lighting isn't built and I've got this many objects not built, it slows it down by a good few frames because it's treating it like it's almost like dynamic lights, I believe. Um, so <laughs> in a weird way, maybe building the lighting now might be a So I'm going to add the graphics options menu and I'm going to include options for include scalability settings. Uh, we'll have vSync, um, we have um, resolution, we have uh, enable uh, depth of field, well toggle depth of field I guess makes more sense, otherwise you only be able to enable it. Um, toggle depth of field, uh, we have toggle motion blur, uh, we have a toggle for, the fuck is it, brain's gone, come back. Um, I was going to say post-processing, but that's fairly important. I maybe I'm have to come back and edit that. There's some other ones I can't remember, but um, I might just go and optimize. Optimize. Uh, optimize. I can't spell right. Optimize. Um, 
particles and um, sort of, I guess, scene effects. Um, I've got a lot of like fog sheets. Uh, to explain what the fog sheets are, basically I've got these assets which I've created. Well, actually, wait, I didn't actually think I created these ones. I migrated them from the... Yeah, so there's the effects cave demo that comes with the engine and it's got these uh, fog sheet blueprints that you could then manipulate and it adds this nice sort of like, you can see it here, it's almost like it works really well in the cave environment. This one doesn't really work too well here. Um, let's select it. So it comes with a plane and then it's got this sort of pan in sort of like cloud effect and then it's got a widget in the top corner so I could like adjust the size of it. There's got some other sort of settings here. You can change the colour of it and stuff like that. It's quite useful, but I might need to go and optimise where I place these. Now, my thinking is removing them entirely and replacing the fog in the level with volumetric fog, which will go better with the whole sort of rainy, overcast look. It might just sort of contribute to the scene a little bit better. Um, so I might do a test with that when we get to it um, and see if that helps and see if it actually looks good in the level. If not, then I'll probably just go back to using fog sheets in certain locations and just dial in back a little bit. Um, if they prove to be an issue, because there might be something um, else in the GPU profiler which makes more sense to sort of fix. Shiny. Shiny. Right. Um... So, oh, and Trello. Um, Optimised particles and scene effects. Uh, yeah, and I think that that would come under all the graphics options things uh, for now. Um, now, there is other things that I would do, but it would take a lot longer to sort of do and it's mostly involving cleaning up meshes and uh, reducing the amount of draw calls on certain meshes, combining them together, all that kind of thing. Um, hello Dean. Uh, there's LODs for all the foliage but not for the buildings. Look at these like modular building sections um, that I don't know, I think might be a bit complex to set up. Um, like we, we have got the level loading in in s sections, um, which will help sort of reduce some overdraw and stuff like that. Um, but. I might put that in, but then move it down, so... I could do it all. I don't know how you... I think that's how you spell it. So I might be able to actually merge some of these uh, big building meshes together uh, and create some of those combined LODs. Uh, I've seen that in use um, somewhere. Um, yeah, I might be able to do that, and then it might be able to optimize some of these distant buildings and stuff like that, so it can run a little bit better. But I'd have to look into that because I don't know too much about it. I'm not going to add that to the to-do for now though, that'd be something I might migrate over later. Um, fix camera issues. So, I think the freezing comes second to the camera getting stuck. So I'm going to fix the camera getting stuck in certain locations and then if possible we'll fix the freezing because Having the camera stuck and not able to play is worse than having 
a camera that does that weird sort of jittery stuff when you move between but it still allows you to play so we're focused on actually making it playable um, so fixed camera uh, gets in stuck um, in certain sections so that's probably where it can't find the correct uh, player controller, player pawn, whatever, it's just went a little bit funny in certain areas, so I'd have to look through that. Uh, then uh, fix camera freezing when switching. I, I'm gonna call it freezing, I'm not sure if it's, it's not really freezing, it's just sort of jumping somewhere else in the level, but yeah, it, it, I could say glitching. <laughs> No, I, maybe not then, I can't be asked. Um, uh, fix shiny Walter. That'd be like a two second fix, hopefully. Um, no, not real though, things just spiral out of control. Um, replace water with forward shaded water. Um, and this is the other thing. I'm gonna have this separate card. I've sort of got a bit of a um, add uh, alternate material paths for um, lower end uh, yeah, for. So, uh, using the scalability switch in engine, because you could go from low, medium, high, uh, to like epic, cinematic, um, you can actually use that switch when you um, have that switch in the engine, you could use that and reference that in a material. So depending on what scalability, scalability setting you're currently using, you could switch to a different branch of the material, which is good, say, for example, if you've got a super detailed uh like landscape shader or like on a weird wobbly thing that uses loads of world displacement and all that kind of thing um foliage shader i don't know something like that anything super com complicated that you've got on epic and it looks really nice on epic quality um and you switch to a lower shader and then it just tanks everything because it's still trying to do everything the same you could have it so maybe it switches to a slightly easier way of doing things which is less intensive which is quite nice. So if someone has a lower end PC and they switch to low, but you still want to push the quality out, then I could add some um, different material branches for things like the water. So I might just have for the low quality of water, I might just have some panning textures and then just have a lower opacity and don't bother with the depth fade and stuff like that as much. Um, yeah. Uh, Scale. I don't know how to spell. It's probably wrong. Um, bear with. I just need to go away and do something. I'll be back in a second. Right, I'm back. Um, so, what we're gonna do is. Oh, wait, I've 
Wait, I'm here. Right. Um, yeah, I'm going to copy that in. And then. Alright, replace ID try logo. That's easy. What I've got to do is replace the video at the start. Um, oh, God. Oh, it just occurred to me, maybe the fact that um, there's that big bit of lag at the start of the game, where, like, not lag, but the black screen, might be where it can't find the media file for the logo to pop up. Um, I'm not sure, though, because I thought that just did that on standalone, but I don't know, that might be a reason why it takes so long for it to come up. But yeah, I could just replace the logo because I've got a new version of it. I just, you know... Um, Oh yeah. There's I no uh, with this one I might need to fix the camera before I actually fix the gameplay issues because otherwise I won't be able to tell in game if I've actually like what the fuck's going on if I don't fix the camera so I do the camera first. Um... I think I'll leave it like that. Um, everything else at the moment, it'd be nice, but I think we'll see when we get to that point. Fix what we got. Um, don't add anything new. So this is polishing. Um, and then, after talking to the other two that were in the team, um, see what where we might want to go with it. I'm not sure yet. Not promising anything with it. Just like you know, but we'll release the free version after I've done these optimizations um, and like you know people could play it or whatever and have a go and see what they think give us any feedback or whatever if they'd be interested in anything which is a bit more full um, if we get a good reception to it then we might continue it might be a bit more incentive to kind of do this other stuff if that makes sense so let me know um, yeah we'll start working I guess uh, Ah, shit, it's 5 to 5. Um, Alright, I'll tell you what. <laughs> probably have another go. I'll probably have another go at this tomorrow or uh, tonight if no one's home. Um, yeah, I think that might be a bit better because then I could just focus more on just like actually implementing things rather than just like talking about shit again. Uh, yeah, that should be cool. So yeah, the first thing we're going to do tomorrow is... Where am I trying to go? There you go. Um, yeah, it's just fixing up blueprint issues. That's all we're going to be doing. I mean, I don't think I'm going to Jesus Christ. Yeah, see, because I'm at it, you have all these fucking controllers just everywhere. With the sequencer, you could avoid a lot of this. Because you could just animate the UI elements and stuff just with fun in it now. Jesus. <laughs> yeah, so I, I think part of the problem that we're going to have is when I'm trying to do this optimization stuff is finding my way through the code, the old code that I've created, because... Just looking at how messy some of this is. I would not have it in big blocks like this. It's just a bit. Mm. But I, I, well, to be honest, it's not that bad. Some of this ain't that bad, but there's a lot here which might be a bit hard to manage, especially if I haven't touched the project in two years. I'm just like, what is going on? Um, 
yeah, then I've got all these matinee events which are firing, which they need to go to do certain things. Matinee hasn't been removed yet, has it? No, okay, good. <laughs> Since that was all sorts of shit. Um, Right, um Yeah, I'm gonna call it quits. If I end up coming back to it later on today then I might, but um Well it just depends what goes on. If not, I'll do like an hour tomorrow just like fixing things. Um I just wanna get into the habit of like doing the streaming thing a bit more often. Um so I could then get into the process of doing like pre-recorded stuff like videos or editing streams into videos like tutorial videos. Um, let's get my content out there. It helps me sort of think about what I'm doing as well. Because then I could reflect on everything I do. So yeah, anyway. Um, I'll be back later or tomorrow in a bizzle. I'm going to press the button.